that is um, the end of the presentation. And um, hopefully you guys ha had some, uh, some good insightful moments of, uh, from that. But essentially, um, as Jordan was saying, you want to make sure that you're being true to yourself, whether it be when you're dealing with other people or when you're dealing with yourself. Because in truth, if you're not addressing things that actually bother you, if you're not holding a standard of what's important to you in your life, you yourself are being a representative. You're not showing that other person who you really are. You're not telling them or being honest with them about the things that you care about, the things that you're finding unacceptable, the things that you are not willing to compromise on in an actual relationship versus just the getting to know you stage. So be honest about who you are. Be unapologetic about that. If God's okay with you, if God is proud of you, that is all that's required. Is anybody interested in sharing what they learned? Well, before they share what they learned, um, I just want to say, I think, you know, you guys should be giving it up for Tashawn. Um, I expect the chat to blow up. She did a great job. Y'all should be thanking her. Um, you know, remember, it's not like uh, TSC people, we get paid. So she has been doing this because God has put that on her heart to give to you. Okay, so please give her love. Please give her love because I need her to do more of these because I get tired of doing them all the time. <laughs> um, but no, I think, uh, Tashawn, you did an excellent job. I know I learned a lot, um, especially about, um, you know, making sure that I look for red flags, that I make sure I take care of myself. And, um, you know, and then just, you know, making sure that I'm doing what I need to do to also look within myself to make sure that I'm not, you know, self-deceiving. But um, definitely Tashawn did a great job. So I'm going to leave it over to her and give it back to her. But again, please, please give her love, give her love. Um, and I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> thank you, Jay. And, um, and Chuck is joining us from the cockpit. So thank you, Chuck, for taking us to work today. Um, Sean B., Oh, there we go. Yes. Um, well, it's, uh, I will say I agree with everything uh, you said in this. And uh, like the, like the Bible story, um, it, it, it would be nice if it was that easy and that obvious. Um, I've, uh, I've always found it a lot harder than that to tell if they're real or not. Um, because like, uh, like, for instance, let, let's say, um, let, you know, and this could go, uh, this could go either way on the, on the sexes. This could, uh, unless I say otherwise, this can apply to women just as easily to men, vice versa. Um, so there's, um, so, so you suppose, uh, I meet a woman and she says, you know, I, you know, I've, I've dated a lot of bad boys, so uh, bear with me, you know, I'm looking for a good guy. And, uh, but, but most, if not all of her past may, uh, may have been dealing with bad boys uh well for one thing um in some cases i would realize uh, after the fact that that's uh, what she was drawn to and and deep down that's what she really wanted and then there's other cases like uh like myself i could say you know i've um most of who i dated were were a certain way like uh like with uh um abstinence um they were agreeable on on waiting but when it came to when they were ready and i held my ground then then things uh, made a change and it's like wait a minute i uh, i told you straight up um, um and then they uh and then they were so agreeable so you know so it's it's hard to it's so hard to tell when they're when they're genuine and when they're agreeable so like in my case if i say well i've dated mostly uh women that were like this whatever this means a, a certain way and i'm looking for something else um i truly mean that there are some people that say it and they just say it but i truly mean that and some could uh, argue that if they say they mostly dated bad boys or bad girls um then that's a red flag because that's what they really want well no that's not always the case because 
what they uh, really want uh, may be hard to find. Uh, for instance, with the abstinence issue, um, statistics I've seen is 97% uh, of adults don't wait, 3% uh, will not have uh, sex outside of the bounds of marriage. So um, in my case, I would say, uh, I would argue, well, when it's 97% versus 3%, that's one out of 33. So that's really hard to find that person who's uh, who you're equally yoked with in that on that level. So when I say I'm looking for a certain person, you know, but had otherwise, I would not want the right person to shy away from me because um, they were not what I had in the past. The thing we need to remember um, when somebody says I dated bad boys or or bad girls is a uh, it's past tense if they really, if things really worked out and that's really what they uh, wanted, they would still be with that person, but they're not, they're with you. Um, so that's a, one argument you can say, well, that person just hasn't uh, found the right one yet. So um, I will, um, you know, I'll take uh, thoughts and comments on uh, everything I said and, you know, hopefully uh, I can learn something, mainly uh, how do you, um, how to avoid harder, the, the hard ones, the spot that when they pretend to be one person and they're, they pretend to be what you uh, think they want. And then at some point, whether it's uh, days, weeks, months, whatever, they uh, start showing their true self. Mav, I take this one to Sean. Yeah. Um, one 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 trick, and Tashawn might have some more, but uh, one trick you can do, Sean, and this is you know evidently for everybody else. Um, if you really want to know if somebody really cares about you, the first thing you need to do is you need to listen to them. Mm. Okay, because most people um, uh, will tell will talk, you know basically tell on themselves, um, and they will tell you you know slowly but steadily uh, what they like and what they don't like. And so what you're trying to do to see if somebody's really into you is are they willing to give up what they like for you? That is- Well, I, I wouldn't I want know. them to do that. Huh? I wouldn't want them to do that. No, I mean, but I'm not saying it has like to be all things. the time. This is the, this is the point I'm trying to make, Sean. Don't overthink it. Um, okay. It's like, if you, if you are a person who loves, because I know some people who love a certain type of water, you know, they will get, you know, like I say, in this particular case, Nestle Pure Life. And every time they buy Nestle Pure Life, Nestle Pure Life, they might even come to your house and say, man, you know, you don't have any Nestle Pure Life, you know, um, and they might get upset about that. But then if they, once they really like you and all you have in your house is Walmart brand, um, they don't complain as much because you just have Walmart brand in your house. <laughs> and if they do complain, they'll just go buy it and bring it to your house. Um, because it's not a big enough deal anymore for them to even complain about because their time with you is a lot more important than what kind of water um, that you have in your house. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm saying. A, a lot of, of us have little Nikki things. Like say for instance, you know, a lot of women have heard this kind of stuff. People have joked about it in movies. They'll be like, you know, don't touch my radio. Don't touch no man's radio. Uh, well, guess what? If he really likes you, boo, you can touch his radio all you want. <laughs> you can change the channel and listen to what you want to because he into you so much that he really don't care if you touch his radio. But the whole issue is, does he love the radio? Like if you come into my car and you touch the radio, I'm not gonna care. Half the time my radio is off anyway. So I don't love my radio. So it's not important to me. That's why you have to listen to find out what is important to him because it's gonna change from person to person. You know, but a lot of us, like Tashawn was saying earlier, we're not really listening to the other person. We're filling in the gaps based off of our past history. And you cannot do that. You have to see each and every last person that you deal with as an individual, as their own separate person. Almost like you have to push a reset button within your heart and your spirit before you start dating somebody because if you don't, you're going to, you know, co go into that new world believing, oh, well, this person back here and this person over here and blah, blah, blah. So you must be the same. That's why women or men will say, well, there's no good men out here. There's no good women out here. No, that's not true. Because people get married every day. 
you know, if you can't find one, then that's really saying something about yourself, or at least like even Sean, you just said, um, you know, that ability for you to choose or what you really desire in your heart, you know, but at the end of the day, like I said, just to get to the main point of the question, um, remember that everybody will tell you what they love, either directly or indirectly, because their behavior will tell you. So when they give up what they love, for you, even if it's temporary, you can know that they're starting to feel you. Because like I said, if it was for me, again, if I knew that uh, a woman only liked Nestle Pure Life and she continues to come over to my house, by the time the third time or fourth time she comes here, guess what? I'm gonna have a case of Nestle Pure Life in my house. Because at that point, I'm starting to cater to her. I'm starting to give her what she's looking for. Okay, so, but you have, but it only really works truly when you know what the person really cares about, if they're willing to give that up. Like if I was in love with a certain water and I changed my water. And again, you'll hear comedians joke about this and say stuff like, man, that girl's so fine, she made me change my religion. That's the concept. You're supposed to love God so much. So if a woman comes into my life and she makes me a Muslim, then that girl is awesome. Boy, I love to stink out of that woman, boy. If I give up some Jesus, you know, so... That's all it is, real quick. But go ahead, uh, Tashawn. <laughs> I've never heard the love the stink, but uh, that sounds like some true commitment. <laughs> but um, but yeah, this the, the key thing above all is you got to make sure whether, whether they're being their real self or not. If they're not working towards the same types of things. If you're not seeing how your purposes are aligning, they're not for you. Um, it's not a, because even if, even if you believe in yourself, okay, they really want this. I, I see it. How many of you have been in the situation where you're putting so much energy into helping that person achieve what they say their purpose and where they're trying to go is that what happens to yours? What happens to you? You're putting more energy into them than they are. And there's nothing left over for you to fulfill God's purpose for your life. And his purpose is more important. <laughs> <laughs> for your life. And so if, if their part, if, if your relationship is about their purpose, then you're abandoning yours and you're, you got some problems with your relationship with God at that point, because you're putting them before him. So um, it seems kind of like, I don't know, maybe mean, but you have to draw a line and say, okay, I know that this is what I'm supposed to do. And you have a finite amount of energy. So where are you going to invest that energy? Are you going to invest it in things that are going to move your life, God's purpose in your life forward? Are you going to just kind of take this shotgun approach of I'm gonna put some over here and with this person and this relationship and put some over here with, you know, these things. But there, I mean, have you ever tried to row a boat? You can't, you, the oars, you have to row in one direction to get somewhere. If you got the energy going in different directions, you're just spinning around in circles. You're not actually progressing. And that is not in alignment with God's vision for your life, what, what, he, what he created you for. And that has to, if, if that stays first, God brings to you what is needed, whether it's people, think whatever it is, he's going to bring that to you because he's not, you know, he is not a man that he will lie. He's not saying, oh, this is the purpose. And then he's going to set you up for failure to set you up for success. So don't be your own worst enemy. And um, who is it? Uh, somebody, somebody's going to know when a person shows you who they are, believe them. <laughs> if they're not, if they're, if they're not doing the things that are consistent with what they are saying, then they're lying. They're just lying. Don't make excuses for them. Do not make excuses for them. If you really feel like, well, maybe ask them straight up. You keep saying that you want to do this, but 
you know, you're not doing the things that are going to get you there. So what's going on? And, you know, I mean, maybe you all can be friends until they figure it out. Adeze. Hello, Tejan. Hello. Can you hear me? Can I you can hear, hear me? You. Oh, okay. Hear you. I'm so sorry about what happened. <laughs> I wasn't okay. aware my mic was open. But wonderful presentation as usual. It was so apt, so precise and practical and exactly what I meet in the, in the you know, dating market. I don't like using that word, but I'm going to use it for the purpose of this um, presentation. And to Sean's question, very good question, because I noticed that guys, most guys, and you guys can agree or confirm, whenever they meet someone they like, nothing else matters. It's like, she can be whatever she wants to be. I'm strong enough to take it. And I find that attitude so dangerous for a guy who really doesn't know what he wants. You know, he doesn't, he has no idea or preconceived idea of what he wants. And looking at Samson, he had the same attitude. His parents didn't want him and even God didn't want him to have anything to do with a woman from Philistine. But he said, this is who I want and that's it. And even when she was, tempting him and asking him over and over again to betray himself and his God. He kept saying, well, I'll just wake up and shake myself off and to be like, you know, those other times. You know, he kept overlooking the fact that she was really conniving. He just didn't see it because he thought he was strong enough, right? He thought, you know, nothing could trip him up. And I see that as just with guys, with men, so prevalent. It's Whenever I like someone, they, it's like all vetting goes out the window. You're not listening too carefully. For me, I love a man who is vetting me as closely as I'm vetting him. To me, that's a green flag. If, you know, <laughs> that is such a wonderful sign for me. But I notice guys don't do it. Instead, they get uncomfortable with all the vetting. So that's not a good sign. So to show what I would say is, for women and annotations, we can agree. Most women are agreeable to anything if they want something from you. They agree to whatever. <laughs> They'll be anything you want them to be. <laughs> They'll say whatever you want them to say because their eye is on what they want to get from you. And they're going to get it because they know exactly how to position themselves to be and to think and to say whatever you want to hear. So for, 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 for me, I would say, if a woman is too agreeable, that is not a good sign. You know, she says yes to you, to everything you say, you don't really know what she thinks, but she wants you to think she's thinking what you are thinking because she says yes to everything. So, you know, ask more questions. Like the presentation says, you can't assume you have to ask if she's saying yes, sure, right, to everything you say, that is not a good sign. And I meet guys who do the same to me. And immediately I see that I know uh, this is probably going to go you know, the other way, okay? So when you're saying something important to you, watch carefully how she responds to that. If you're saying something important to you, watch how she responds to that. And number two is, does she have her own boundaries? This should be a great sign to you as a guy. If a man is not who he's supposed to be, you know, if a man is not working right, if his confidence is not there, he will resent a woman with boundaries. So a healthy woman has her own boundaries. So you bring yours, this is where you stop. You don't go beyond this. You should also see her doing the same. Maybe not in the area that's important to you, but she should have things that matter to her as well that she's not going to cross. So that's, she say to you that she has integrity, she has, um, she knows who she is. She can say yes, she can say no. You know, that's, that's a, 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 um, a woman with a good head on her shoulders and that should be attractive to the right man. And the last one I wanted to say was maybe putting too much focus on that one thing. We discussed that one thing last week, that one thing, the sex, okay? When you put too much focus on one thing, you're going to miss 
all the signs, good and bad. And I'm talking to myself too, <laughs> you know, when I say this, because when you fix your mind on that one thing, all the other things are going to be like scrambled in your head. You're not going to know what to make of them. So take out the focus on the abstinence, on the sex. If she has a leaky character, you can easily decide what her response would be about the sex without even getting to that point. If, that, if you understand what I'm saying, if, if, if her character is not stable in other areas, maybe she's not very honest, maybe she's too agreeable, maybe she doesn't keep to what she says, you know, when it comes to keeping to time, you know, small things like that. If you notice that happening, you can easily conclude, and rightfully so, that when it comes to the big things, she might be wishy-washy on that. So I, as a woman, that's what I'll have to say to that. And I'm done speaking. <laughs> oh, you're good to sound you on mute. <laughs> Sorry, I was talking. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Um, so uh, uh, thank you, Adeze. Um, I think those are, are good points. Um, I think um, here, here's a little cheat. Um, and, and some of you may have heard this before. In truth, everyone has something that, it, that you can bring up that you can just bring it up and you can just sit back and they'll just talk because they're really passionate about it. If you don't know what that is about a person, then you don't know them. Because everybody's passionate about something, maybe several somethings, but at least one something. And um, if you can't name what that is, then you want to start doing some inventory on like, do, what do I really know about this person? Besides them being a good listener. Because... <laughs> uh, there's, you know, something, and I, I, this is, this is something that I just do because I, I sometimes get tired of talking, believe it or not. Um, but I pay attention to those little things that people, um, kind of throw in and like, oh, okay, that's something that's important to you, whatever. And so, um, if, you know, we're in a conversation and I feel like they're not really holding up their end, then I'll just ask a question about it. I'll bring it up and I'll let them go. And they're just gone and they're talking and they're talking. But um, if you can't think of anything like that, or if, if when they talk, it's all surface stuff, that's not really about them. It's about somebody else or it's about, you know, so something generic or, you know, TV, movie, something like that, not actually telling you things about them, then it, they're not effectively communicating with you to, for, you know, the whole point is to get to know each other. So you, you really need to have that pretty early on, pretty early on, you should be able to say, oh yeah, I know this is something that's really important to them. And if you have no idea what that is, that's a problem. Either you're not listening or they're really not, or they're holding, holding back who they really are. Isabella, Samantha, did you change your mind? Um, I don't know how to say her name, but ADJ, uh, kind of hit it on the head at the end. So I was like, let me not be the dead horse. She kind of covered it. So, yeah. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. Well, thank you for your willingness to share. Come on, Isabella. Is there noise in the background? Um, my son's doing karate. Um, I really appreciate the group. This is my first time sitting in a session. Um, one of the things that I think is important and is okay, it is to be kind. Um, my, one of the things I would love to hear talked about down the line is um, what I think is like the real problems in dating, which isn't um, interest, but it's how do we treat each other? How do we talk to one another? How can we talk about um, topics from a different perspective, but to do that with kindness. If you think about um, why people are divorcing, it's money, it's um, communication, of course, it's sex as well. So um, that's just something that jumped out at me. I think, um, and I guess I'm responding, responding to the, the person is too nice. 
I get that a lot. I think I'm going to try to be really nice because you, I can actually tell people things that I don't like in a respectful way. And I think that's really important um, for everyone to feel respected, whether it's a person you're dating, whether it's your children. Um, that's like really important. There's even this whole entire love language on parenting boys in particular, and they really talk about about parenting from a place of respect. And and I'm like, wow, as I'm learning about that, I'm like, this is a lot like relationships and what the Bible teaches us about how men and women ought to treat each other. Um, and this, I'm kind of maybe piggybacking off of what Sean said about morals, which was <laughs> really addressed. There is such this this chasm in the to Christian dating where um, I don't know. For me, it's a little awkward to hear getting close and getting connected with people that's leading down a path of sexual immorality. But we're going to put um, love language on top of that. So I think that's um, a bit off. If you're a Christian, um, are we going to obey God with with our body? Are we going to walk in love? Are we going to treat each other honorably and I think that's okay um and I apologize I am rambly my background is in psychology and I don't agree with a lot of what psychology teaches and I'm more leaning towards the bible that we should definitely um if we are Christian women we should be the kindest um we should also speak up for ourselves in love and in truth but we should be the kindest and we should be um honest and that's okay it doesn't mean the person's trying to pull the bag over your head um <laughs> but I just thought I would share that because it can almost sound like there's nothing that's, you know, it can almost feel like, and I'm not trying to be offensive. I hope I'm not, but wow, the person's really nice. So I can't trust them. Okay, great. So then let me go with a mean person now. And then marriage is going to fall apart because they were rude the whole entire time. And I thought that they were being deep. <laughs> so anyway, that's my two cents. Thanks for allowing me to share my opinion. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Isabella. And thanks You're for welcome. coming. Thank, Thank you. you. So I, I think you're right. I think that we we do we should be um, kind to one another. That's why I kind of try to say how wait because I'm I'm really direct and sometimes that hits people the wrong way. But I, I want to make sure that I'm not being you know misunderstood. So that's that's why I do it that way. I don't feel like I'm being mean, but what I find is that people who don't like the question, like they don't want to answer it, are more the people that feel like it's mean. But anyway, <laughs> um, you should be kind. And I think that, and when you, before, when you, when you said it, Isabella, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking about parenting because unfortunately in our world, we've been kind of taught in, you know, modern, the last, I guess, generation that you should be your, your child's best friend and, you know, all of these things that I totally disagree with. Um, when you love someone, you tell them the truth. You, it's your job as a parent to say no. Um, and, and God tells us no all the time because he's trying to help us by keeping us from harming ourselves. And um, so I don't think that you should be wary of a person that's too kind. You definitely shouldn't exploit their kindness. But I think um, what was said um, by uh, Adeze earlier um, you want to have a person that has standards. So they don't have to be harsh or unkind about their disagreement, but they do, they do need to have standards where they're saying, this is, this is what's important to me. This is where I stand. Same with you. You don't have to be mean about it because they have a right to feel how they feel and make those choices. It just doesn't have to become your choice. It just doesn't have to be something you live with. And um, what we found in, you know, all these different discussions is that folks have a different idea of what um, morality is, where the lines are, what's acceptable to God with our bodies and all of those different things. And we all work our, out our own salvation. It's, you know, our relationship with God is our relationship with God. So there's no judgment as far as telling another person that they're right or wrong. That's, that's for God to do. Jesus will talk to them about their issue in their conversations. But when you're talking about aligning or joining with another person in your life, you do need to be on the same page of what your standards are, what's acceptable to do or not do in your life. And it's not 
you don't have to do it in a hurtful way. You don't have to do it in a mean way, but you just let them know, you know, for me, this is what I have to do for me and my relationship with God. And if you're, if we're in agreement, then that's great. If we're not, you know, this is what God put on my heart. And I have to have my relationship with God has to come before my relationship with any person. Um, And if they have a problem with that, then that's a different situation, but they should be able to respect the fact that you, you know, have these standards for yourself. And there's, there's value there because ultimately if you're going to have a life together, then you're going to have standards for your life of what you're going to allow to come into it and what you're going to keep out of it. And um, you want someone that is willing to be joined to you with that defense mechanism to say, hey, this is not good for, uh, for our life, our relationship, our home, our sanctuary, our children, whatever you know, you're trying to protect and hold that standard for. But definitely doing things in love. There's no reason to beat anybody up. Val. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> we can hear you, Val. Hi, this is uh, my first time, so thank you for having me. Um, I guess my greatest takeaway, or not the greatest, but the, the presentation was amazing. But I guess the one takeaway that I took that I didn't see it from that perspective was just how much um, I'm, I aligned with Samson. Um, you know, when I like to think of the stories, I always do it a little bit more animated in my head. And I feel like um, with him... It's almost like how we treat it. Like it's, I don't think it's that he didn't recognize it. I think he like kind of probably side-eyed her every time she asked the question. Um, But I think he felt as if he was just strong enough to handle it. And a lot of times we see the red flag when we see the sign, but we say to ourselves, no, I'm strong enough to handle it. And then we just, it keeps piling up until there's a part where it reaches, you know, to where it becomes our undoing. So I just, you know, I guess that was like my biggest takeaway is like, wow, we are all, or a lot of us are like Samson where we see them, we recognize them, we know it, but we, we feel like we're strong enough to handle it. And we just have to be careful because it could be that final straw that just breaks us down, which then we take on those things and bring it into the next relationship, so on and so forth. So that's all I wanted to say on that. But thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to joining more of these Zoom calls. Thank you, Val. Thanks for sharing that. I, I, um, I, a lot of the mistakes that I've made in my relationships with people have been based on my certainty that I would be fine or that it was God's intent that I be like that, that person, you know, to, to believe, to help that person to, to, you know, find their way. Like they really wanted to do this and I had enough faith to spare Um, or I had enough love to, you know, to, to help. And um, what, when my children were small, um, when my husband passed, I was continuing that, but now I had my kids and I, I told my kid, they, you know, they saved my life in a lot of ways because they made me more selfish for their sake. And God showed me that, um, you know, you're, you're having these struggles because you're giving everything away. And Absolutely. You're, you know, you're not supposed to keep it all to yourself, but you have to hold something back when you're looking at any uh, situation. And I think about, you know, like uh, agriculture, when, when you're um, harvesting, you don't consume everything that's, that was, that grew, you hold something back for the next planting you, you have a storehouse, you have a silo that you hold things back. So you have something that you give away and, you know, God guides you on that. And then you have something that you hold back. That's God sustaining you that God is, you know, saying, okay, this is for you and your nourishment and your well being, So you can continue to be a vessel, but not that you, you know, give everything away. And you're like, okay, how am I going to pay my rent? 
<laughs> or, you know, or just emotionally, how am I going to, you know, face tomorrow because I'm just, you know, left without anything for me. And some of us who really give a lot don't necessarily have people that are pouring into us on a regular basis. And so God is saying, you know, that's what that um, Jesus is there to, to replenish you. But if you're giving out everything that's being given in, then what's, you're not holding anything for you. Not everything is for everyone. Some of it is just for you. Um, I'm sorry. No, I was just agreeing. It's almost like, you know, you keep depositing, you know, people keep, uh, you know, withdrawing money from you, from your account. And they keep withdrawing, you keep withdrawing after a while, you know, you're gonna <laughs> gonna have some old draft fees <laughs> to pay off. So yeah, I get it. Yeah. Absolutely. Anybody else want to share on uh, the presentation or any of the comments? Sean oh, Williams got his hand up. Oh, Sean Williams. Share with us. Can you hear me? We can hear you. What's up, Shashan? Jay. Hello, everybody. Um, hey. Deshaun, you did an excellent, 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 powerful um, presentation, um, especially at the end, just kind of topped it off. And it reminded me, actually, it just made me reflect because I have some, I've got some beliefs or I've been rationalizing and justifying some things. So it just kind of made me take an in-depth look at that. Um, but your presentation was powerful. I want to just talk a little bit about the beginning um, when you talked about asking questions. And, you know, we got to we gotta be able to ask the tough questions. I mean, we're adults, you know, so I'm always asking tough questions. It is impossible to be around me without me asking you some tough question because it creates a connection. It creates an emotional connection, you know, and I will never do that without sharing myself first, you know, but I'm always, y'all yeah, know me, I always look for reciprocity and everything. Um, so it's got to be a give and take. You know, every time I leave a date, I look at how I feel after I leave that date. And if I feel like just drenched and spent and not filled up, then it won't be a red flag the first time. But after the second or third time, then I got a red flag. Because I see I'm constantly giving and not getting anything in return. You know, one of the things this group has showed me is how I was constantly dating the same person. Um, different body but the same, so I was able to now see the signs, you know, stop rationalizing it, stop justifying it and make some changes so that don't happen again. But the people in this group like Joseph and yourself, you help me kind of see the patterns um, when it comes to dating, you know, this group has helped me. But I was reminded of a story when you talked about asking questions. Anyway, there was this lion, he was, the lion was roaming around in the jungle and he was asking all the different animals. So he went to the monkey and he went to the monkey and asked the monkey, who's the king of the jungle? The monkey's like, you are Mr. Lion. So he went to the giraffe, giraffe says, you are Mr. Lion. Then he went to the elephant, asked the elephant, who's the king of the jungle? The elephant wrapped his trunk around him, slammed him down a couple of times and then just threw him headfirst into a tree. And then the lion got upset, I just asked you a simple question. Why are you getting so angry? You know, but the thing we got to remember is that with questions come assumptions. You know, we, we do assume some things when we ask a question. So in your comment of not to assume, I mean, that's, that's like deep. That's real deep. You know, we got to be careful not to assume. You know, I used to tell my kids all the time, what you do, speak so loud. I can't even hear a word you're saying, <laughs> you know. And the truth be told, I do that with people as well. You know, I call it giving them enough rope to hang themselves. So I've been around the block long enough to be able to see who you are without you saying a word. You know, you talked about how they act with other people. Yeah, that's who they really are. <laughs> and yeah, you're right. It's going to come to you eventually. 
You know, everybody gets a turn. So it's going to come around to you eventually. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to reach out, say hello to everybody. To Sean, again, you did an excellent job. This is one of your better presentations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I, appreciate I guess practice makes perfect. Um, but that's it. I look forward to seeing you guys at the, uh, the bowling. Okay, let me let me uh, just uh, pray us out real quick because I know some people will be dropping off pretty soon because um, it is um, twelve fifty. Thank you, by the way, Minister Sean. I was just about to say that um, everybody, if you if you're new, you can register at csc365.org. Um, Sean Williams, who you just heard, he is our webmaster. He works on that website. Uh, we do have, we put um, the videos up on there um, after they're, um, you know, done or whatever. Sean will put them up there. So if you want to go back and watch our old videos, a lot of them are out there. Um, we have a few still out on YouTube under JL Speaks, but we're trying to move everything to 365, um, CSC 365. Um, also, um, yeah, so let me just pray us out and then... Uh, you know, anybody who wants to hang out, we'll still be answering questions and talking for a long time. So we don't really encourage you to go. But I do know some people have uh, other appointments to get to. Uh, Lord God, th I thank you and I praise you so much, Lord, for just uh, this wonderful day. Um, everything is so beautiful and sunny outside here in Georgia. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for Tashawn, Lord God. We know that the Holy Spirit has been working with her all week on this presentation. So we thank you. Um, and we thank you that it will be touched, uh, that it touched each and every last person that was on this call and each and every last person that's watching the video. And we know, Lord God, that you are good, glorious and righteous. And we just thank you. And we, I just ask that you would just touch each and every last person, bless them, guide them, give each and every last person what they need um, right now in Jesus name. And we just thank you, honor you and we praise you in Jesus name. Um, so also really quick. Um, again, ladies, you can start to see that the, we do have guys on the call. A lot of the guys show their face a little bit more um, than the women do. But again, I do encourage you ladies to show your face as much as you can, or at least show a picture. Um, Cause you never know, your man could be looking at you, checking you out. You could also ask questions or talk. It's a great way to get known before we meet up in person. Because when you meet up in person, a lot of us know each other cause we've been hanging out. <laughs> So, I mean, we're friendly, but, you know, um, you know, the more you talk, even if you just ask questions, it just helps us to kind of get to know you a little bit. Um, it was nice to see that Mr. Joe Black wasn't walking 50 miles like he was last week. I guess he was hard because today he was driving. Um, so um, I guess uh, he walked maybe, you know, to Georgia and then he drove back. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Here he is. He's, he's showing us, you know, he got his mask on outside of that. <laughs> so I had to mess with him a little bit. And then we got Mr. Michael Wafford up there, you know, showing off the muscles. He always makes sure he's got his shirt up, you know, to show off his muscles, you know, to all the ladies. He also can cook ladies. You know, he likes to, he likes to let all the ladies know that he can cook. Um, same thing, Minister Sean is down there and, um, Savannah, and he is looking for a nice young bride. I mean, he's a, he's very wise, but he's one of our younger people. And Mr. Sean uh, B is over in Alabama. So we got, you know, guys all over the place. We probably got other guys, you know, that are hiding their face. But, um, you know, hey, that's how it is, ladies. I'm just letting you know, I always try to give everybody a shout out. So I'm going to shut up now. Minister Sean is looking at me crazy. He's going to talk, he's going to preach. You know, God has been moving on him. His preaching voice is getting stronger and stronger. Y'all definitely want to be here next week when he talks um, because he is definitely a uh, true man of God and he is um, powerful power. The Holy Spirit is on him. And um, so take it away, Minister Sean. Um. Wow, got to talk after all of that. That's something. <laughs> um, well, Tishan, the first thing that I will say to you is that uh, the older preachers would say that you were walking heavy today uh, with your presentation. Um, definitely some great information from start to beginning. Um, a couple of things that I want to highlight uh, with it is, one, 
making sure, as you said, to listen, to make sure that what is said match up with what is being done. Um, I think that is so interesting um, because even with the story of Samson and Delilah, um, yes, she was listening. Well, I would say she was hearing, but I would say she wasn't listening um, because of the fact that her listening was all geared towards being able to immediately respond, which is why in the scripture you see where every time that uh, Samson told her a different instruction and to, to give him his defeat, she immediately went to work. Um, it doesn't say that days, weeks passed by, but she immediately responded to what he was saying. Um, and we have to be careful that even outside of trying to be malicious, that when people are speaking, we're really being receptive to what they're saying to us um, so that we can adequately process and digest and then respond to uh, what, what we have learned in, in that conversation or in that interaction. Um, and then the other thing I would say is that we have a choice to make a lot of times when it comes to um, those who we say that we can fix. Uh, we have a choice to make to have a project or to be looking to build a relationship. Oftentimes, we, even when you see the potential in the individual, and that goes back to Tashan's point of whether or not uh, that person, God has put you in their life truly for the purpose of dating and relationship, or is there some mutual exchange uh, that God wants to happen for the betterment of both individuals? Um, so we, we just have that choice to make. Um, are we willing to, to risk not getting what we need in return because of trying to always be there and help and, and support someone else's vision. Um, and that is so key what you said concerning the fact that the two people will be an asset to each other's visions and purposes. Um, uh, that, I don't know, I can't say enough about that. That is so strong um, because God tells us that he will give us a help meet, a help meet for our needs is what I would extend that to say. Um, so you got to be careful of that. The question that I want to pose to the group for discussion out of it is concerning what the psychologist talked about with uh, the person in those little adjustments they were making um, as far as uh, the, the flirting. And I think there is a difference between airing out the points of contention versus nagging or being in your head. Um, and I'm just curious to hear other people's thoughts on that balance. Um, my personal opinion is simply that if if it's on your mind, it's worth bringing up because of the fact that it is on your mind. Um, but I'm curious of that balance uh, of what other people think about that. Anybody want to share their thoughts? Um, well, while, while you're gathering your, your um, thoughts on it, I, I just want um, to, to say, uh, Minister Sean, I think that there's something that we maybe don't remember sometimes. Uh, if you go back to Genesis, um, where God is basically having this initial uh, communication with, with Adam, and he tells him, you know, what he wants him to do. And essentially it's saying, it says that what he has dominion over. And there's there's the one particular thing that's not on that list. It seems like it's everything, but there is something missing. And that's other people. We don't have dominion mm. over anyone else. So 
while you may have good intentions of, of changing or helping someone, if this is not what they truly desire, regardless of what they said, they may have said that that's what they want, but if they're not making the effort, if they're not actually trying to make the change and you're doing, you know, you're doing it because that's what's best for them, it may very well be. It, it may really truly be what's best for them. And out of love, you're trying to help them. But we don't have the right. We don't have the authority to decide that they need to change. Mm. Um, we don't have the right to, to make them change or to ordain or, you know, we, don't, we can we can pray that God help them. <laughs> you know, we can do that. But actually having the authority to say you need to be this way. We don't have that right on any level. And um we, if we really think about it, don't necessarily want anybody else to have that authority over us either. There's, I'm sure we all know people that would prefer we be somehow different <laughs> and that's their problem. <laughs> so <laughs> you have to kind of take it from that same perspective of, you know what? Um, some people are not going to like everything about me, just like how I don't like everything about other people, but they have the right to be that way if that's how they want to be. Can I can I get some pushback on that? Sure. So I know we say uh, we don't have the right. I, 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 just paraphrasing, we say we don't have the right for people to be a certain way that we want them to be for us. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in the midst, in the um, when we talk about, and one of the things me being a manager, and I talk about things that when I separate myself as a manager as far as me dating, and I always think about the mental health part versus the mental toughness part and how we're supposed to be so mentally tough when it comes to these relationships, but there's some mental health that we have to be able to, okay, let's just slide out the way. All right, you have past trauma from this. All right, you haven't got over this. And we supposed to still like them as a person instead of using the word holding them accountable about getting them the help. So I'm, I, so the part that I'm trying to I'm, I'm thinking like we ask we we tell people hey you have you have an issue pray on it you have an issue go to counseling you have an issue speak to a pastor about this we're telling people that because we want them to be in a place that is in a healthy place so the relationship is healthy so mm -hmm. when when we say that hey I don't want this person to be that well, are we saying that we don't want them to be healthy for us no. Mm -hmm. No, what we're saying is, is that it has to be their choice. It can't be your will. It can't be you saying this is how it should be. Because even if they do everything you say, if they are not repentive of that choice, if they're not saying, I want to be different, it's not going to matter. It's not going to make any difference. Um, I'm glad Isabella put her hand up because I thought about her when you were talking, Michael. You did. Um, we, <laughs> we, we have to be loving mm -hmm. in our treatment of each other and their issues. Mm -hmm. But we have to be accepting of the fact that as much as we can support and promote them making better choices for themselves and healing from things, we can't actually make that happen. That's something that they have to choose for themselves. It's something they have to do for themselves. And I think when you deal with a newborn baby, that's like the easiest example of how we have no control over anyone else because that baby is completely and totally helpless but if it wants to cry there's nothing you could do about it you can give them reasons just like other people you can give them reasons to change but you can't actually make the decision for them they're completely in control of themselves and um and that's you know that's that's really all you can do is provoke them in love to, to make better choices for themselves, to promote, to provoke them in love, to show them that, you know what, there's a better way, there's support for you. I'll be here for all of these different things. But the, the choice itself is 100% theirs. And the part that bothers me is that people wait till tragedy happens before they make the change. Like it's got a, it's either a death or maybe somebody got sick or maybe that, um, they didn't focus on eating right. They, there's got to be some level of tragedy before it's a change 
and they know right, they just don't do right. And unfortunately, that's the catalyst that some people need. A good example of this is um, when God told, um, I can't think of his name now, and he told him to go preach in Nineveh. Um, Jonah? Thank you, Jonah. <laughs> I had Samson stuck in my head still. Um, when God told Jonah to go preach uh, to Nineveh to repent, he told him to go do that but he did not uh, make Jonah go. Um, and to your point of the, the uh, catastrophe happening, it wasn't until Jonah was in the belly of the uh, fish that he finally decided, all right, I'm going to go do it. <clears throat> but even in that moment, other people's lives depended on it, but he still gave Jonah the choice to decide to follow God's will or uh, to not follow God's will. Um, I would even argue when you look at for the move, uh, for example, uh, the movie Brown Sugar, it took for the matriarch of the family dying for the family to come together. But the family still had the choice of whether or not they wanted to come together. I get the wrong movie. It's probably a few movies. Like that. <laughs> and, and see, that's, and that's, I've been the movie part. you're talking about, but I don't think it's Brown. Oh, uh, the one where the money was in the TV. I can't think oh, of it. Um, oh, uh, Big Mom, not Big Mom. Um, not Big Mom. I know the movie. Talk, it's it's Vivica Fox in the movie. I know the movie. Talking yeah. About. Soul food. Soul food. Thank you, Soul Food. Soul food. Yeah, yeah. Soul food. Soul food. And and that's the, and and that's the part when, especially when it comes to dating, like me, I'm I'm forty. I'm um. I, Active, I'm an activator, um, and I have focused on being uh, a people, like a man of the people. Meaning that I, as far as like me having the need to be right or just trying to set, make myself uh, be more, just sh show myself. No, I'm always listening to the, what a woman's saying, and I was watching body language. Like my my whole core is just seeing how they move. How do you react to this? How do you react to this question? How do I make them laugh? Uh, I've, I've been more focused on seeing where they are and then saying, okay, well, um, what are the next steps to where we need to be? And put the ball, I always play tennis, put the ball in their court. What did it, nope, go right back on you. What you got? And it works. It works at times, but also it, it reveals it reveals who they are as well. And um, long story short, it's just when I, um, especially if you're talking to a woman who believes in God or a woman who maybe just uh, watch YouTube, Sunday YouTube services, or maybe somebody's watching the Bible, um, the, one, the one thing I see they have in common is that they're searching for someone to lead, uh, but that necessarily doesn't mean they want you to lead them. And the part I'm always trying to, I'm always trying to bridge that gap is that how do you allow me to be the lead without feeling as though you need to take the leadership role away from me at the same time? Uh, well, you just so opened up a whole lot of can of worms on that one. We talked about that one for a minute. Can I, can I respond to what Deshaun had? I apologize if I mispronounced your name, um, if that's okay. And I think it dovetails to what Michael was asking. Um, so this is kind of coming from the place of not just reading the Bible, it's from personal failure, um, studying relationships from a godly perspective. And I find that today there's this whole movement out there that's not all that new about resting in your feminine power and, and all that stuff, but it's really kind of ripping off the Bible. And um, as a black woman, um from slash caribbean island and america right latin america caribbean island i feel that that is one of the most beautiful messages that as i begin to walk more intentionally in my obe obeying god with my life um if i am not here to control the man right um i am quite capable of leading on uh, myself within a context of a job but if i am going to become equally yoked with someone who is going to lead me um, and in what context is he going to be able to lead me. And it, to me, that doesn't mean he leads me during dating because you haven't bought the cow. 
Um, so no, that's my son. He's moving, but um, but he can't hear anyone here because it's an adult conversation. But anyway, um, I think that there is a dangerous place, Michael. What I'm hearing is that to me, that's a dangerous place for me as a woman to try to start fixing um a guy and pointing out all his flaws. I feel like. He should already know who he is spiritually, not perfect, but he should have enough knowledge of the Bible to understand the first two paragraphs in Ephesians 6, right? Um, to me, that's kind of basic, at least for me personally, and I'm not here to judge anyone else's standards. Um, as I said, I've read the Bible a lot. So challenging someone, I feel like I my role in a dating space, and I, for me personally, maybe someone will benefit from it is to watch and learn and to observe, um, not to fix, not to condemn if there's differences. If there is no alignment, I respectfully say no, thank you. Um, and I'm sure God is gonna bless you with someone who is perfect for you. And I really hope for that for you. Um, because if I get into the space that I see a lot of black women getting into of fixing the guy and challenging and questioning, shopping, feeding and clothing, um, you kind of take, I believe you're taking away his masculine identity and you're um, standing in a place that he might not even know he's starting to hate you on some level, but it'll show up because you're ripping from him his proof to himself and to the world that he can conquer this world and be this amazing person. Um, and he doesn't need to be rescued. He doesn't need me to rescue him. But um, I think I do feel challenged by what Michael asked because it, it makes me wonder how do you challenge somebody without <laughs> stepping into that space? Because that's a space I do not intend to step into and I do not think it's appropriate for me personally and I guess privately. But um, should I be challenging him? I don't know. I think encouragement is more along the lines of what I think. And, um, you know, if the Lord chills me otherwise, that's fine. But that's just my two cents. Um, I was watching, and I'll try not to ramble. I was, I love reality TV, and I was watching. Um, was it Married at First Sight? I watched all of them. Married at First Sight, Ready to Love, and then Married at First Sight. Um, the man Olajuwon was challenging his wife to um, to be a wife, be more wife-like, and he wanted her to challenge him in kind. I don't. <laughs> to me, that style is not really going to work very well in the long run. He's going to get burnt out and hate what he thought he wanted. But that's just my two cents. I could be wrong. I don't know how, it may be someone knows better than me and they could say it, but if Michael, maybe the, the challenges in your case to say, and this is a maybe, I don't know, I can't speak to any, anyone here, but to teach the woman how you want to be challenged in a way that feels respectful, right? Because most guys I've ever heard and everything that I've ever read and saw, it's like, stop telling me what to do. Stop taking over my masculinity. Um, stop trying to drive for me. I can do this myself and let me lead. Mm. Should he do that in dating? Without, the, without paying for the cow? Eh. But anyway, I'll stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Isabella. And the follow up yeah. on follow up, Isabella uh, was saying is like for me, when I challenge, my challenge for women when I'm dating, the first thing, my first thing, be available. Like, don't give me, hey, I'm I'm good on this day, but I may not see you for another three weeks. Be available. Because if that's the case and you're not available, the first question I ask, why did we exchange numbers in the first place? Like, I'm not exchanging numbers as, like, as business contacts. Why did we exchange numbers? So I always say, be available first. If you're not available, say I'm not available. I'm not a person like, no, nah, don't even come this way. Just, just take a detour somewhere else. But don't think because what you're doing is, is almost like you're dating in fear instead of just being assertive. And it's crazy how I watch women be assertive against other women um, when they tell them, no, girl, you should be doing this. Instead of saying, you know what, the things I tell these uh, my girlfriends to do, I need to do that for myself so I can be just, uh, for, for my man or for the man that's trying to date me. And I see a lot of women that are dating this, this fear. I'm not like, fear of what? Like the same fear that women have, the same fear men have. Mm. Yeah, Michael, I would say just real quick, um, because you also have to remember it's it's about where you find the woman, um, and also for women where you find the man. Um, because one of the things you're gonna find, especially here in Atlanta, is a lot of Atlanta women are career driven. Okay. And career driven women, um, they're busy. 
That's just what it is. Same thing, career-driven men. I'm a career-driven man. Um, so I spend um, a lot of time working. And so when I date, you know, a lot of women are like, well, you know, you don't call me, you know, you don't text me all the time. You know, it takes me, you know, it takes two or three hours to get a text from you. Um, I don't hear from you, you know, for three or four days. But I always tell them at the very beginning of the relationship, I'm like, I'm a busy guy. I like to stay busy. That is my personality. And I'm like, if you don't like that, then you're not the one for me. And so you also have to pair to those types of women because there are women, believe it or not, that they all they do is watch TV or all they do is read books. Or all they do is chill and relax. And those women are almost always available. And there are men on the same boat. They, they work their nine to five, they come home, and that's it. That's all they do. And they're almost always available. And so the reason why I'm saying it like this is to, is to try to illustrate just the point that just because you're attracted to somebody doesn't mean the relationship is necessarily going to work because you have to have that personality. You have to have that rhythm. And I'm not saying that the woman should stay at home and give up her job or the man should stay at home and give up his job or whatever, I'm saying that you have to know who you're going to, you know, who and why you're going to date a certain person. Like I know because I'm so career driven, I cannot date career driven women because when I date them, then we don't have time. I've tried. She doesn't have time. I don't have time. And so we never see each other and it goes away. But if there's a woman that has a little bit more time, she's a lot more relaxed. She's a little bit more of a homebody. We get along much better. You know, because she might even come over and hang out and she might be watching TV or doing something else. And I might be doing some work, you know, trying to finish up some stuff. So you got to find that person that fits, you know, and I know, you know, this, Michael, I'm just kind of saying it more for everybody, because there's a lot of people out here. And you got to remember that there's all these different, you know, different types of people. And I know that there's a lot of women probably right now on this call, especially the ones that aren't saying anything that are probably a lot more homebody-ish um, that are just really kind of want to chill. Um, and so those are the types of people that you know you might want to lean toward just a little bit more. And that's also why the women that don't talk as much, I try to get them to come out to the group because when you got the guys come out, you have more opportunity to meet men. But I'm done talking. I think Lainey's up, Sashawn. Yeah, ladies, don't, ladies, don't be shy. Don't be shy, ladies. Come on. You got to, Michael, you got to, you need to move your camera where the light, because right now you're silhouetted. Sorry, sorry. You can't this see is, your face. This is, sorry, this, this, you're cute. Sorry. So you got to move it where the light is in front of you. My fault. It's this black thing going on right now. I'm just no, trying no, to. See, no, you just need, this this is like my neck. This is my night color. You. you need to go back to the kitchen like you was the other day. Everybody <laughs> can see well, you. Let, let me, maybe. <laughs> no, because see, that's making it worse. You got the light I'll go to needs the to kitchen. be in front of yeah. you. Yeah, light needs to be in, in front. The light's in front of you, Michael. See, we're trying to hook you up. <laughs> and all the women now, they got their hands up. They're like, what's Michael's number? He's kind of cute. What's his number? What do he do for a living? Now, you got to have a job, Michael, now. You got to oh, have a well, job. I'm, a, like, I'm an IT manager. That's my job. See, there Ooh, you go, IT. IT manager. There you go. IT. We love IT. Oh, and he got some money. Come on now. And he got a job. There we go. We, we, we'll go outside. We'll, we'll, we'll go outside here. We'll hang out here. There you go. So now you can see him. He yeah, got his right. little his yellow hat on. You know, make it's sure that every once in a while you flex one of the muscles. See, you putting the, the sun <laughs> behind you again. Just oh, so dark. The, we, see, now we can see you. See, no, now you can see me. Put the light a little bit more. <laughs> I'll put the light on. Okay, see, we can see hey, you more now. Y'all need a side conversation. Here we go. Here we go. Now we can see you. <laughs> I, I take him to here we go here we go. I, I take I take him to the office. All y'all ladies, take a good look at him now. He's forty years old. He an IT oh, manager. Yeah. He loves Jesus. Oh. Okay. You got any kids? You got any no kids? kids. No, no kids. kids. You want kids? Of course. Of course. Okay. So ladies who want the, kids. One okay, kids. Okay. You know. I'm the oldest of eleven kids, so I want kids. So he yes. want a whole lot of kids. He might want a whole lot of kids. So y'all have a whole lot of fun while y'all making all them kids. And y'all remember that. Y'all gonna have a whole lot of fun while y'all making all them kids. All right, so um, I'm gonna set up uh, to Sean Laney, I think is up next. Jay got this to shoot my shot. I, I just, 
I just want to share this right quick. And I know that some people may disagree with me, but people do what they really want to do. So no matter how busy you are, if you want to spend time with somebody, you're going to find time. Um, what, what, if you're in the, on the other side where a person is not spending the time, um, how, or how demanding of it are, are, you, are you being? Do you have to be the center of attention? Like if JL is working on his animation, do you have to sit like a, like a cat in his lap to like, you got to pay attention to me or is it okay for y'all to just be in, you know, together and he's doing his thing, you doing what you're doing. Um, and are you showing interest in what they're doing? Are you contributing to it? Like if you want somebody who's ambitious, are you um, like strategizing with them or like, okay. And that goes back to what I was saying before about the purpose. If you guys have a shared purpose, it may, it may be that you guys are doing different projects, but if you're helping each other move towards it, then you're, they're not losing ground. You're not losing ground in furthering what you're trying to do because you're helping each other get there. Like, oh, that's a great idea. Or I don't know how to do this. Oh, I know how to do that. Let me show you. Those things kind of contribute to that development and that connection. But if it's really like, well, you know, if we're together, or we're spending time, then nothing else can happen. It's just me and you and that's it. Then a person who's super ambitious or really, you know, like that's probably not going to work out. Um, but you have to be honest about who you are. No, I'm going to agree with that. And I also say, um, you know, because like I said, when you're when you're in this, because I'm just want to say from a, a guy's perspective, that's very ambitious. Um, a lot of times it's not necessarily about. Uh, if the woman is okay with just like I say being in the space, you know, even if she's working on something, I mean, she could be working on something in the other room, or I could be working on something in the other room in her house, um, or we could be working on something side by side. It's just that I just do a lot of work, so um, you know, people need to kind of understand it. Just like CSC, you know, um, for those that are new, I am the main organizer of CSC, so there's a lot of stuff that I have to do in order to um, make sure that, you know, CSC is constantly running. And guess what? Even when I get married, I am going to run CSC. God has put his hand on CSC. And so therefore, um, right now, I know that I am I'm going to be doing it. And so whatever God sends me, whoever God sends me has to be okay with that. But the point of it is you can make it work um, if you want to make it work. But I, also part of my point, though, Michael is that there are plenty of people that that's just not what they do you know there are a lot of people that they just said I mean I'm, I'm amazed because like I say I work all the time so I'm always amazed when I run into people and they're like well well Jay have you seen power no have you seen this show no have you seen that show no and I'll they'll literally list about 100 shows and I'm just sitting there like I haven't seen they're like well do you watch tv I'm like no I don't they're like, when do you go to bed? I go to bed at nine o'clock. When do you get up in the morning? I get up at 4 a.m. And when people say, you know, see that, they, they just, it blows their mind because I work. I work. And that is what's what it is. But the women who have been interested in me, they're, they, they find a way to make it work. So I guess the, the point that I'm trying to make is, you know, you have to, like I say, find that, that synergy, just like Tashawn said, but there's also, like I, like I said, I run into a lot of uh, women that they just really want to chill. You know, that's just who they are. Their energy is just to chill. To, you know, they want to get married, have babies, and just chill. You know, um, take care of their babies. They don't really have um, ambition to do a lot of different stuff but support their man. So, and there's also men like that for women. So I'm just saying everybody has what they're looking for. And always remember, there are beautiful people in every category. There are beautiful nerds. There are beautiful people who love art. There are beautiful people who um, are very intelligent. They're into politics. Um, there are beautiful people in every single category. So don't ever feel like just because you run into a beautiful person that you have to make this work. Because there's a lot of attractive people all over the place doing so many things. You need to have those light interests. That is true. And, and don't allow the politics to get in the way too. Like if you Democrat and she Republican, it's okay. If she if she's Democrat, you're Republican, it's okay. Because that you I don't think your politics define who you are. I think what you do as far as helping others, 
your community, um, how you how you um, how you value amongst others. Um, I think that matters. Um, I think we need to, we don't really focus on the things that matter. We focus on the things that are just important to us on a short period of time. And I'm always about forecasting for uh, long term. And so whoever I'm with, I'm going to forecast uh, for the long term. And put and I want us to put each other in a position to win. Because if we're not winning, what are we doing? Yep, very true. All right, Lainey. Okay. So I just wanted to say that I am so, so, so grateful for finding this this platform. This makes my second meeting with you guys. And um Tayshawn, you are just awesome. You always say something that opens up my mind. Um, just a little backstory. Um, I've never been married. I don't have any children and I'm in my late fifties. And I don't have a problem with dating. That is not my issue. There are men that come out of the woodwork everywhere. Um, but I, but I think that, like you said, you know, when you're trying to keep an open mind and, um, you know, you want to try something different and you always want to be open minded, uh, not too opinionated and allow a man to be a man. And, you know, these things, the framework actually came from my mother. So I'm looking at everything that my mother does and, and what she's done with my late father. and. You do all of these things, but yet and still, it's like that man is not appreciative of that perspective. And you do it, you know, with everything that is of God. And I find that I have not gotten married because. I am that woman that is out there that is floating around in this world, you know, that it doesn't seem, I, it, I, I just don't connect with the, 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 the man who does not have that perspective of God, that really is a believer and know that God is the ruler of all things. Um, I think, and I, and I hate to say it because, you know, they always want to tell you, you know, if you, if you think something, then this is what the will is going to be done. But I feel that um, it's like, I don't know what else to do besides keep my faith in God, continue to, to move about accordingly in the world, but not be of the world and just, um, you know, just go through life. And then of course, you know, I expire, it, it, you know, whenever it's time for me to expire, but I don't think I'm ever going to get married. I don't think I, I will ever, uh, my, my, definitely my time has passed when it comes to children, um, birthing children. But uh, on one hand, maybe it'll happen, you know, to get, to actually get married. But I think that I'm one of those where it's just never, you know, I date, but it's just, and the men are like, oh yeah, you know, uh, this woman, you know, she's celibate, you know, she, li she lives a, a life of abstinence, you know, she's a vegetarian, you know, she's uh, uh, educated and all of that. But then when it, when it comes down to it, it's like, they want that. And they want a woman who allows a man to be a man and, you know, says, you know, maybe I don't, I mean, I'm not the person that, you know, um, gives her, I'm not a nagger. I'm not, you know, I'm always uh, very calm. I'm very laid back. I allow that man to be who he's supposed to be. Because like I said, my framework comes from my mother and from my, my grandmother. So it's like, I know how to be in my position and how to stay in my lane according to the word of God. However, the men, I find they want you to come out of that. So it's like, 
okay, well, they want you to, um, you know, wear more sexier clothes or they don't want you to wear sexier clothes. It just depends upon which man this is. And then, you know, I may have a man who, okay, you now you want me to be sexual with you after a year, but how can I do that when I'm living a celibate lifestyle? So it's like, I don't know, should I be continuing to date or should I just stay home and not even go out at all? So I am confused. Trishon, can you please help me? Because I am, I am literally confused. You know, I, I, I am confused. You know, I'm, I'm a small, petite woman, you know, and I'm probably like a size five or six. And it's like, a man don't want to, you know, I hear them all the time. They don't want to be with a woman who doesn't take care of herself. They don't want to be with a woman who, you know, doesn't exercise. You know, I am nature inspired. You know, I work out, you know, I eat healthy, you know, you know, try to look good in everything that I put on, you know, inside and out, keep myself, you know, with, you know, with the Lord and always on that. But it's like, they like it for a moment. And then all of a sudden they don't care for it. They don't care for that mindset. They think that I'm too like a, a Bible toting woman here, you know, and it's like they instant it from the beginning. They like it. Then all of a sudden it's like, no, I'm just tired of it now. You're just not, you know, uh, we're going to have to, you, you want to get more into the world. And I just, I'm just at this crossword where I just can't, I can't go past it. I don't know what else to do. So, but I just want to say I, that I am part of this group because everybody has a different perspective. Um, what you said today, Trishon, is just awesome. It just, it, it, I feel like, I don't know, should I just throw in the towel and just live, you know, can I, there for what? Can I, I just, can no. I make a, can I make ahead, a comment? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just think that, um, her comments, uh, I failed in a marriage to my wife. She was just like this woman. Uh, is it Lainey? Lainey? Mm -hmm. and, um, she was amazing, godly, trying to be the right person and trying to be supportive. And um, she was a champion, really, uh, of trying to be the type of woman that could... Be, be a fine woman, supporting, encouraging, strengthening, uh, complimenting. And um, sorry, my, my light is not, not good in here. Um, and I just want to say that, um, you know, being in the world for, you know, we're, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Sometimes we say that, but sometimes we're in the world and we're of the world. Even if we go to church, we're in the world and we are of the world. And we say the right things and we pretend to be the right people. But in reality, I stifled her, you know, I, uh, I was so used to being in these conflicting relationships with whether it was men or women that were not supportive, that were uh, hostile, that were undermining, that were discouraging, that were, uh, you know, not the godly type of relationship, that I was very uncomfortable in the relationship. And all of her healthy behavior, all of her godly behavior, sometimes was, it was, it didn't match with the behavior I was dealing with at work all the time, nonstop, all day long. And, um, I didn't realize this, but I was having difficulty appreciating her and it eventually drove her away. And, you know, it's so funny. You don't know what you have till you lose it. And I just wanted to say that what you're doing is amazing and you need to find somebody that can appreciate that. Somebody who knows the value of that, because what you're, you're in the right, you are in the right and other people are in the wrong like myself thank you joe um that was even better a demonstration of what i was thinking to say to hear someone that had that that was on the side of those men laney that you're talking about um what happens when we have a standard for ourselves is that it causes a person to have to make a decision 
And when they say things like what you're saying, Lainey, of, you know, I can't deal with it or you, you need to change, they're in a crisis or a crossroads in their own choices. And they know that they're being convicted in their spirit, to put it simply. And sometimes it's not even things that, they, that you're saying you need to do this. It's just that you are choosing what you believe to be the right thing. And your choosing of it makes it harder for them to make excuses not to make the right choices. And it makes them kind of face themselves in like, you know, it's easy when everybody else is doing it to say, well, you know, why should I do it? Or that's too hard or things like that. But when a person that you know that is you're seeing on a daily basis is, are, is making those hard choices and living at that standard that they say is unachievable, unreasonable, outdated, whatever, then it pricks in their heart this choice that, you know what, I'm really making excuses for myself. There's, I really could do this. Look at how they're doing it. I'm seeing them make these decisions. Am I going to um, make better choices? Am I going to work harder on my relationship um, with Christ? Am I going to do things differently because it is possible. I'm seeing it happening. Or am I going to choose the, you know, the, the, the path that most people do and continue to be of the world because that's easier. That's more comfortable. Um, that is something that they have to live with. You, once you make those decisions within yourself, and you get that strength of faith and relationship with God to betray that is a betrayal of yourself, but it's also taken away that relationship that has, that has and will sustain you forever. Cause those people come and go even just, you know, marriage wise. I mean, like I said, my husband passed, some people have you know been divorced or had the same things happen. And so that person, however long in your life, they're not going to be there from, from the very beginning to the very end, only, only uh, God is there always. And um, that is the relationship that you have to hold first and foremost above everything else. And it's not easy for sure. Um, Lainey, I am, I'll be 50 this year. And um, when I became a widow, I was 27. And I have been, I haven't been remarried. I wanted to be remarried um, and it didn't happen. And, but I did come to a point of choosing to find ways to plant seeds along the way. If it wasn't going to end up being a lasting relationship, how could I provoke them to be, to, to, to be better, to, um, provoke them to be more faithful, more dedicated to what's best for them, their relationship with God, um, to plant seeds of just, you know, seeing things differently. Sometimes people don't realize that they're doing things to themselves or they're making choices that they don't have to make because they've never seen it other ways. And my loving way, Isabella, I'm gonna keep going back to Isabella, my loving way of doing it because I know I am so direct is instead of telling a person, I ask them questions that they clearly have never thought about where, they, where they're saying they have to do something or you, know, you need to be more worldly. Why? Why do I need to be more worldly? What is the problem with choosing this path? And that's why? it, that's the question. That is the question. Um, why do I have to be, you know, um, I, that is what is hard, uh, for me, the older that I get, why is that always the question? It's like, I can't, I can't run away from that one question. And the second question, why are you single? You have to have a husband. So why in the world are you single? That is the second question I get. Um, I'm um, sorry. It's funny. Is it, is it because, sorry, let me cut you off. Uh, oh, I'm okay. you this question. Is it because that human beings are, or the mindset of human beings is for us to not die, to, I guess, die alone or live alone, especially as we get into our older years, that we want to be with someone that we could have that communication with? 
and not hold on, not be around like younger people to keep yourself staying young? Is it, is it that, is, the, is it the mortality part is why people had those conversations with you? I feel like it's less about other people. I keep hearing the story of the leper saying to Jesus, I know you can heal me, but will you? And every time you talked to me, it sounded like it almost sounded like you were giving up or you had given up. And I just want to encourage you if there's absolutely no way that if your motivation is right and you really want and desire a spouse, that God will keep that from you. So when you're talking and saying that men are this way, you're saying and projecting that all men that you run into are going to be like that. It just so happens that you run into some bums, some scrubs, some losers, but there will be somebody who has the same values as you. There's somebody who is going to be available and accessible and want the things that you have to offer. So focus less on other people and the questions they're asking you and on your own confidence, you just listed all these amazing qualities. And for me, I just, you seem like this amazing, happy, generous, joyful person. So don't let other people and these experiences make you bitter to the point where you're just wandering around in your own misery and then causing it. You know, mm -hmm. God does want, I really believe, and I just, I just felt it very deeply for you that part of happening is just this experience that you're having is that you're questioning like okay I know you could but will you do you have this for me and he does and you just have to like I just want to encourage you just keep believing in yourself in God's promise to you and in your own ability to in the meantime you know love yourself and surround yourself with good people and grow in faith and love in your relationship like um Taishan said that this one relationship is the one that will be sustaining and lasting. But just because you've run into these people, these individuals that don't qualify, they're not qualified to be with you, doesn't mean that that's going to continue to be your experience. Yeah, I want to say Thanks. something just really, really quick, um, you know, to you, Lainey, as well. And I kind of agree a little bit more with Stephanie. Um, because, I mean, we don't know all the information, you know, we're hearing you and I do trust that you're giving us, um, you know, your best, you know, version of that. But I truly believe that number one, there's multiple people that God will send, you know, all of our way. Um, and I would just have to say, I mean, and I'm not trying to, you know, blame the victim here, but I mean, if we really want to find the answers, I think we have to ask a little bit tougher question. Um, but I, I would also have to say, I mean, what are the guys you're picking? You know, what are they like? You know, what is their energy? Um, what, what are those things, that energy within them? Um, you know, that's one of the things that we all have to recognize. There is not just one type of man. Um, there's not just one type of woman. All women are not domestic. All women are not loving babies and caring about them. Um, there are women out there that are just as aggressive as, um, for instance, a Donald Trump, you know, that wants to take over the world and really be aggressive about finances. There are women out there that are just that aggressive. And there are men out here who are the best nurturers that you will ever see. They will just love a baby, change those pampers, will wash, you know, your car, will vacuum the house. But what we find a lot, and I found a lot in this group, and I'm just going to be real, is that a lot of times those guys, they tend to be a little bit more domestic, they tend to be a little softer spoken, they're often overlooked. And women um, will bypass them over and over and over again, constantly going after the very aggressive men, um, the men who are considered more by the media to be more desirable. And, you know, you can Google. Um, I, go ahead. Can I, or I forget, um, you said of men, and, and that is very, very pertinent here, uh, the type of man. Um, I think you're onto something um, because the type of man that I have been dating, I guess the past, five years, I'll say five years straight, is, well, they're all career, all career, career men, excuse me, all educated men, they all career men. 
have very good jobs. However, they've been married at least once. There's one man um, that I've recently been dating and he's been married twice. Uh, The men usually have at least one or two children um, that are not young. They're probably 18, 19 and in college. Um, The single man is much younger than me. Again, I'm in my mid fifties. Um, I don't care to date younger men, but I find that they are, haven't been married in their thirties, but that's not, I don't care to date younger men. I'm not saying anything is wrong with it if there's some woman who cares for that. But for me, in my age group, um, they've been married at least one time. And so for me, being a single woman, I just want to keep my mind open, but I don't want to go far back as a 30 in the 30s to date. Even though I've been asked, you know, uh, they do want to take me out, but I just prefer to stay around in my 50s. Well, honestly, what you're doing there is better. Um, I would even encourage you to date men in their 60s. Um, not date guys really younger than probably your own age. And I'll be honest with you, just to be real, um, there's a big thing going around right now with younger men, and they actually seek out very attractive older women um, because they just really want to have fun with you uh, for a couple of years because they know most of the women are beyond child eight, uh, childbearing years. And so they just want to have fun. And then after and maybe have you to buy them a little bit of their wardrobe, and then they break up with you and then they marry somebody younger and continue their life. Because when they, they talk to younger women, the women want to get married. Um, the women generally don't have any money. So they basically are using uh, a lot of the older women uh, for their resources. But they don't really have a desire to be with them. But to get back, like I say, to the main point of it, I think that you have the reason why you have to analyze the men is because, you know, and like I say, we hear this often for women in the group, you know, and I'm going to use one of the ladies she's not on today but I've used this in in the past. Um, This particular lady, really sweet lady, she comes out all the time uh, to the group. And when I first was telling her about different personalities, um, she kind of wasn't necessarily against it, but you know, it kind of did blow, kind of blow her mind for a little bit. And so she ended up dating a guy that was totally different. This guy was a touchy feely guy. He, um, was very, you know, much in her space. He was very much in his own emotion. Um, Very emotional, very, uh, you know, easy. You know, I mean, for a lot of better terms, he was very soft, almost feminine. But he was very masculine in who he was. But his personality was a lot more touchy-feely. He he understood his emotions, blah, blah, blah. He was not really career-driven. And she said the first time that she went out with him, it was very difficult because um, she didn't have natural chemistry with him. She did not understand, you know, why he was acting certain ways because all the men that that she had dated before acted very differently. But she admitted that there was nothing wrong with him. He was a nice guy. Um, He had a great career. Um, He had everything else. It was just the vibe she wasn't used to. Well, she continued to date him and I think she broke up with that guy, but then she ran into another guy with the same type of energy. And um, as far as I know, they're still dating. And they've been dating now for about maybe about four or five months. And, you know, when she talked to me about it, you know, she let me know that the relationship was going well. Um, What she had to do was she had to change her focus. She had to change her focus from one type of guy to another type of guy. And this is very difficult for a lot of people to do because they're used to a certain energy. They're used to a certain vibe. They're used to a certain, especially when it comes to women, they're used to a guy being a certain way. And so when a guy comes in, he has a different energy, um, he does different things, then it confuses them a little bit. But um, what, you know, but what she recognizes now, again, it's the same thing I'm trying to explain, is that there's a lot of different personalities and you have to find that personality. And for a lot of women, especially women in the church, and somebody said it earlier, Um, and I kind of agree with them, is that um, a lot of women in the church, they say that they're not of the world, but that's bull. 
they date like the world, they act like the world, they dress like the world, and then they come in and they praise Jesus. Because at the end of the day, and I'm not even beating them up about it, but at the end of the day, there are some innate things that a lot of women have and or men have where we have certain desires in certain directions. But um, depending upon you know, your personality or your certain situations, you might need to lean yourself one way versus another, okay? And to, to make it just a little bit more clear, and then I'm gonna shut up, is that um, I'm, a, I'm an intellectual, okay? Um, I'm just being real about it, I'm an intellectual. Most of my friends that hang out with me are intellectual. They like to talk about why the sky is blue. You know, that's what I always say, why is the sky is blue? But there are people out there who really want to, in Atlanta, go have fun, grab some wine and drinks, and turn the club up. And even if they're 50, they still might want to turn the club up. Well, guess what? When I was 20, I did not want to turn the club up. When I was 18, I did not want to turn the club up. In fact, I barely drink at all. The point I'm trying to make is I would rather a great conversation with somebody over having what most people consider to be adult fun. And I'm not talking about sex here. I'm talking about everything else that they see adults do. Um, and so my thing is, if I'm dating, it doesn't matter how pretty the woman is. If she cannot keep an intellectual conversation, it will not work. I will not be attracted to her. I will just think she is boring. She will think I'm boring because I don't turn the club up. But I don't think she's boring because she has nothing to say. So the thing I'm trying to, the, the point I'm trying to make is you've got to find your person. That's why dating is so difficult because you're trying to find a person you're attracted to who has a personality that works well with you, that has a vision of the future the same as yours, plus about two, you know, plus being Christian and a couple of other things. So what I'm, you know, trying to get the point to you now is, and this is another thing because I know you're new to the group, is don't just wait for men to come up to you in a grocery store. Okay, if you see a man that you like at church or whatever, you know, it's okay to smile. It's okay to look at him. It's okay to get his attention. It's okay for you to say hello. Okay, because you need to open up your window of all the other men out here instead of the men that are coming up to you. And that's what most women do. They wait till the man comes up to them. He who findeth a wife, that is crap. Okay, women go after their men. Look at Ruth and Naomi. Okay, Boaz just kind of looked like, whoa, Ruth kind of fine, but he didn't make no move. All he was was nice to her. He, he would have been put in, in the friend zone. But Naomi was like, girl, you better go get that man. In fact, you better put your cute outfit on, put you some clothes on, and put your makeup on and go get. Okay, so in this group, like I said, it's all about getting you married. So we don't like to get about around the bull crap. Okay, so you need to focus in on all of the men around you. See every man that exists. The nerds, the weaklings, the weirdos, you need to see them all because once you get beyond those, you're gonna see a lot of really great guys that will wait for you to have sex till marriage, that will be good husbands for you. Okay, and a lot of these guys are overlooked day in and day out by women. <laughs> Okay, so I'm in. I'm done. I think Tawana wants to um, be Before she says something, I want to uh, interject uh, what you mean when you say that he that found with the wife is crap. I don't want anybody to get the wrong understanding with that. Um, and just simply saying that making yourself and positioning yourself to be available um, and doing things that would be beneficial and healthy um, with becoming available and being your best self to be attractive to uh, another man. Um, and then the only other thing that I wanted to ask, um, when you were speaking, Laney, you mentioned a couple of times about uh, men who were divorced. Is that a part of your, your list of looking for someone who isn't divorced? Um. It's just that it, when I first started dating, um, 
in my early 20s, it just single men who's never been married before didn't have any children, or they might have had at least one child. Um, and then some period of time, I guess 10 years later, it was more of someone told me, well, I think you need to open up um, your view of other men who has been married because sometimes people can get married early on in their lives and then um, find out that they outgrow one another or shouldn't have been together in the first place and that you should be open-minded to that and just, you know, just look at them too. So then I was like, okay, well, maybe they have a point here. Maybe I should start dating men who has been married before. So I just, I never stopped. So I've been, I've been dating men who has been married at least once or twice and has children. And um, so now that, that's what I do. Okay. And the reason why I ask is because you mentioned it a couple of times. And so for me, um, I'm thinking that that is a point in your mind of notoriety, whether it be good or bad. Um, but the thing that I would remind you of is that when a person has been married, just remember that in this moment, that is in their past. And not to allow that one point to be a part of the present moment between the two of you can potentially have. Now, if there are just other things about that man who was married, then that's a whole separate thing. Um, but that's a part of the vetting process that you go to go through. Um, but in two weeks, I'll actually be dealing with uh, the topic of divorce. Um, and the one thing that I will tell you for this one moment here, um, as it relates to divorce and, and what God says about it, um, and just remember that God gives us grace, um, and not just with marriage, but with sin in general. If God were to hold us accountable truly to everything that we have done within our past, we would be in a very messed up position. Um, but just as he has allowed himself to put those things that are in us, in our past that he's delivered us from, remember that their divorce is a part of their past. Um, and to allow for them to be extended the grace to be able to see where they are in their present. Thank you, Minister Sean. We're all looking forward to hearing, but I think whatever your past, hopefully there's evidence you learn from it. Like Joe shared, you know, he, he um, realizes, or he realized a lot of things and that's in the past, but it wasn't wasted experience. So it, um, it's good to, to um, sometimes get people who have learned from experiences that, okay, I know what I need to do different next time. Let's hear it, Tawana. She don't have her camera on today. What's up, Tawana? No, my camera's not working. So I'm like, I want to see oh, it. Oh, she got two of them. She got one yeah, of them. she got two. She, she's she's in Michael's one. living room. <laughs> Basically, because she got the light behind her too. There she goes. Exactly. You know what? I had to, it, you know, bad lighting. Um, and I'm sitting right in front of the window. But anyways, um, so it was a lot. Um, I, I think it was a wonderful presentation, first and foremost. It was really, 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 really well done, as usual. Um, I don't know. I was just thinking about um, what Lainey said, and some of my comments are pretty much um, like hers. I just thank God for this platform. Uh oh. You're on mute. You're on mute, Joanna. how we have to be aligned with God and him aligning our person that we meet that person and that God has to be in it because I was just thinking about everything that you were saying and basically what resonated with me was that you have to be transparent right 
um, that you want us to be transparent and you and we should also be looking for transparency in the other person so that we can find out what those red flags are and make sure that we get out of a bad situation as quickly as possible. But I was just thinking in all of that, like how dating has become so difficult because in that we see people who like, I'll just say from just the initial dating process, when you meet somebody, you know, you give a guy your number and then um, he might take two or three days to call you because nobody wants to be thirsty. And then the girl has to, or the guy has to wait, you know, okay, they, is it 30 minutes before you respond to a text? Um, or, you know, should I wait an hour before I respond to the text? It's just so many, it's so many dating in the, I guess you could say in the worldly sense, you know, and we're trying to be Christian about dating, obviously, but I mean, there's so many unwritten rules, you know, don't be too transparent. Don't, you know, it's, it's not, it's like where it's, it's conflicting messages. So I was really able to really see what Lainey was saying, because on one hand, it's like, we do need to be transparent, but then at the same time, don't be too available. You know, if a guy doesn't call you by Wednesday for a date, then don't go out with him on Friday because he's waited to the last minute to call you. But then also they say, be spontaneous. And if he wants to go on a date, you know, it's just so confusing about what we should be doing as Christian people and trying to be open and be the person that you're that you're trying to be authentic. I'm trying to be authentic. What you see is what you get. This is me. This is Tawana. But at the same time, as Jay was saying, like some people might find that to be boring because I am doing what I say I'm going to do. You know, I'm pretty much even keel. But I don't know if guys always like that. They might say, I want a good woman. But then if they get a decent woman... That may not always be what they're saying. They, that's not may not be what they really, really want. As um, Sean said at the beginning, some women want bad boys. Some guys want bad, bad girls. They don't. They want a project. They want a woman who has to be tamed, who's a little bit on the unpredictable side. So I mean, it's just I, this this whole thing about being transparent. I, I understand what Jean was saying, but it just made me um, realize like. Um, how difficult dating is to be transparent, to be open, and then realizing how much God has to play an intricate part in aligning us with the person that we're supposed to be with, because it's not easy, because we are dating in the world. So I'm just thankful for God for this platform. And I just wish that it was more platforms out there so that Christians and, you know, men and women can just get together and talk about things and issues like this, because it's so much game out here and and that's all i just wanted to make a comment and i'm just thankful for you all it was it was good i mean thank you Tawana. i know tashawn is really for it but i just wanted to say something real quick because uh minister sean said something and then i said something and then sean b said the same thing so all three of us are saying the same thing you do not have to wait or play games when it comes to phone tagging a guy um and that's honestly why honestly it frustrates me because I know that, you know, I love you guys and I love you ladies, but I know, you know, people leave here and then they get on YouTube and then they listen to all these dating gurus tell them um, how they're supposed to live their life. And that's the problem because everybody's listening to advice from hundreds of different sources. <laughs> and then you're trying to figure out what's right and what's wrong. But a mature person is not going to play those games. That just is what it is. So if a guy likes you, um, he's going to call you. He might call you the next day. I don't know if people will call you the same day unless y'all just had a great conversation and he just didn't want it to end. But um, like, you know, you met him in a parking lot or whatever. I don't know where you would meet him. But, um, you know, so he might wait a day or something like that. But I know with me, I mean, you know, I do get busy, but I usually tell the women up front. I say I'm a busy person. So I'm just letting you know um, that way I don't have to play that game. But um, you shouldn't have to worry about, you know, whether or not the guy texts you literally two seconds later or three minutes later or three hours later. If he's playing games like that, you don't need him. You know, I mean, if he's 18, OK, I get it. If you're 21, maybe. But if you're over 25 and I think most of our our crew is over 25. OK, no, just get rid of that dude and just go on to the next dude. Because no, I meant like I meant like, you know, they say. That when you respond to a person's text, I've heard people say this dating gurus on whatever channel or whatever I can't think of now. But like, if you get a if you get a uh, text from a guy, you're not supposed to reply right away. It's just so much 
um, in terms of rules, quote unquote rules about what we're supposed to do. So don't reflect text right away, wait about 30 minutes and then text them back. So you don't appear on so you don't appear too available because guys don't like sometimes women to be too available. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like Again, when you meet somebody who's being transparent and authentic and seeming like they're interested in you, you should be open. I'm just saying for the guys and the women on the group in the group, if you meet somebody and they seem to be interested, you shouldn't think of that as that person, uh, you know, maybe they're liking you too much. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just silly to me. Um, yeah, it is. I agree. Go ahead, man. It's a good point. It's silly to me too. So the thing I'm going to say about that, if a person has to say, don't respond so you don't appear too available, I think that is more of a reflection on themselves in the fact that they don't have a life or have anything to do. So it sounds like they need to find something to do. Um, and as J.O. would say all the time, get off the couch and go outside and do something. Um, but the other part of that, too, though, is... Bishop Jakes uh, did a series lesson um, once about natural instinct. Everything in, in life that is around us fall into their natural instinct. Um, every animal, um, nature itself, the weather. When the clouds are heavy in the sky, it's going to rain. If there's no clouds in the sky, the sun's going to be seen. That's mm. natural. But then we as humans have gotten so smart that we forget how to do basic things. And we forget to do just simply what seems and feels right to us, according to what the word of God says, of course. But some of these things that we're listening to rules on are very primal things that we should just follow what we know to be right and true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree, Minister Sean. I think that it really comes back to um, just there's a huge amount of assuming that's happening. Um, whether you watch TV or not, um, Isabella, I like reality TV too because people are fascinating. <laughs> I really feel like they're just like... It's maybe really we need a side and, an, and maybe we need a side analysis chat on all these relationships. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I I um the the texting and you know how me, how long you should wait in the calling and all all of those things are based on all 100% assumption. It has yeah. no basis in reality of what that person is actually thinking or feeling is all projection of, you know, our own thoughts. Like I've had people get upset because I I don't text back immediately and in my mind and what I share, because I am direct, is um, if you wanted an immediate response, then you should have called me. Mm -hmm. If you're texting me, that means that I can respond when I'm available to respond. Because generally, when you do respond, that's taken as, and I'm saying behavior wise, it's taken as, oh, you're available to talk right now. And so then there are additional text messages that come through and, oh, actually I'm in a meeting. So I am not able to text you. I was just responding because I saw you text me. So, okay. So we don't start that chain of text messages. Let me wait until I actually have time to text, talk to you. Um, but uh, I think that the key to the to dispelling the games is communication and let a person know what your expectations and your feelings are and if they have a problem then okay next Very i mean <laughs> everybody's not for everybody absolutely i gotta get some thank you next going i mean you know y'all really need to get some of that going oh I, I have that i think that's too i think i got that too well but <laughs> But I'm done. Thank you so much, everybody. I just, I think, I appreciate you all. No problem. Honestly, Come on, Natalie. Really Natalie, like gotta. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, Natalie. Nat, so, um... <laughs> Say what? oh, I didn't realize that was you. I saw the I name. I didn't either. I was really <laughs> interested if you know the hands up. Oh, I'm not, I'm not hearing what Jay is saying. He said you took your picture down. 
Oh, because I'm on my like work computers, one of my work computers. I'm like trying to do some coding while I am listening. So I was a little, you know, I was tuning in and out. But um, for the most part, thank you for the presentation, Tashawn. Like I said, well, like everyone said, it was it was really good. And there's definitely pockets of things that I thought um, was so relatable to me and what's going on in my life. But more recently, what's been discussed right now is this whole text messaging thing, right? My question to the group is when it comes to like expectations, like for instance, if we have like this ideal partner in mind, do we... Do we verbalize that to someone that we're not even sure is our partner or not? And I take the whole text messaging for an example. So for me, I'm not, I'm a tech, I, I can text, but I'm not going to text you like uh, on, on conversations about life experiences. Like if you're asking me, like, how was my childhood? How did I grow up? This, this, that, and there. A lot of people want to text that like text those uh, questions to you and expect an elaborate response. I'm just not going to do that. So the person in my mind, if that person is for me, they would automatically know that. You get what I'm saying? So I feel like if I have to train or tell somebody, this is not a conversation to text. It is more of a conversation to call. For me, that's an instant turn off because I'm just like, uh, yeah, this person's not for me. I shouldn't need to I'll ABC you through, you know, certain basic stuff. So for me, I will kind of see my way out of this little communication that we have because that's already for me like, almost the red flag as in how many other minute, like minor things, not minor things, but um, minuscule things where it's just like, I'm going to have to train you or baby feed you or tell you how I, you know, quote unquote, want to be treated. I mean, that's not one of those things in, in terms that falls in line with that. But like, what I feel like certain mindsets, like I can't, I can't tell you how to, how to think. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was just like, I'm just like, if I have to tell you certain things, I could already feel that we don't think alike. So for me, that's where the effort in what I do or the way I communicate with you is going to disseminate after that, because it's just like, we're already not on the same page when it comes to some basic stuff. And so I want to know what you guys think about that. Like, am I being too dismissive or do you guys kind of do the same thing? I have a question for you. Um, one, have you ever made that fact known, but then you said that you shouldn't have to make it known. So my question um, turns to, if it is so basic, why is it so hard to share that? Um, I would say not basic, but rudimentary. Like for me, if you are trying to get to know someone, if texting is what you do, that's a, <clears throat> at least from my experience, it's a big indication that that person is not a good communicator. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't want to blanket, you know, people that don't really, you know, the masses, I guess you could say, but I don't know. I just feel like there are just certain indicators that I look at. Like if a guy tells me, hey, let's talk instead of text. Okay. That's somewhat of a turn on for me. Cause I'm like, we might be on the same page because I don't have to tell you to, it's almost like those things that there is even a saying or a meme about that, where my love language is not having to tell you, you know? And mm. I feel like that's one of the things that fall in, falls in line with that. But love languages themselves have to be communicated. <laughs> Um, and the thing that I would, the last thing that I'll say on it is that um, write the vision and make it plain. Um, I think at some point you have to be willing to say what it is you want about those things. It may seem elementary to you, but the fact is that we live in a time now where um, there are are people who have lived their lives through a communication space just through text message. Um, now, if you make that known and then they can't switch to having that be a 
oral conversation, then that might be a different thing. Um, I think about, for example, with me, there was a girl that I was trying to pursue once, and I, I mentioned um, this before. I was on my way home from work once and um, saw uh, someone that I thought was attractive, turned my head all the way around in the car. Oh, you tell the quick, story. <laughs> right. <laughs> found the quickest parking space I can to go and um, to introduce myself. And uh, with her, I initially began by texting. Mm -hmm. Although I hate texting, mm -hmm. but the reason why I uh, did that is because what I found was that most people now only prefer to communicate through text. Mm -hmm. um, and that wasn't the only reason, but that was a part of the reason why I missed out on who could have been a great person because I had began to try to lend myself to be um, what my experiences were teaching in that moment. But just because we're texting, if you don't make it known that you prefer to talk um, and not necessarily saying that you even have to say, hey, I hate texting if you want to blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Um, but if the conversation is initiated, hey, what do you think about, uh, I don't know anything. What do you think about going to the moon? saying, hey, this is a conversation that I prefer to talk about in person or over the phone, uh, can set up the standard so that he knows she wants more interaction uh, outside of texting mm -hmm. that could be very beneficial and still lead you to someone who's able to adequately communicate in the way that you want. Gotcha, I appreciate that, that makes sense.